Now let us see some XML questions and answers. XML, extended markup language. What is XML? XML is extensible markup language. Extensible marks so markup language. Now, this is the universal language for data on the web. Now, everywhere in most of the systems, you will find that they are utilizing XML. That is why it is a universal language. Now, this is for data. This is for data and specifically on the web. So XML is a technology which allow us to create our own markup language. So it's a meta language. It, it allows you, it, it allow, you know, allows you to make your own language. And XML documents are universally accepted as a standard way of representing information in platform and language independent manner. So XML is a platform and language independent also. That is why it is universal language and universally accepted language. XML is universal standard for information interchange. So basically, XML is, has been recognized and being used as the standard for information interchange. Now, XML documents can be created in any language and can be used in any language. So you, no matter what language you are using, no matter in which way you want uh, to inherit this, the beauty of XML, it is always, always available for you. What is the difference between XML and HTML? The XML uh, in no way clashes with HTML. So there is the comparison is uh, somewhat uh, because they, they look same, they are talked same, they they have come out of the same mother as GML. That is why this is often um, asked question that what is the difference between XML and HTML? XML is because they have they both have very different purposes. HTML is for displaying purposes. XML is for data representation. It is not for displaying purpose at all. HTML is used to mark up text so it can be displayed by the user. So it's, for, it's basically for presentation and it's for display purpose. While its XML is used to mark up data so it can be processed by computers. Right? It is used to mark up the data for processing, uh, enable uh, the computer to process it. Then XML describe both structures, like uh, you know, an appearance. So it, it, it has structures also like paragraph, and it has appearance also like bold and italic, etc. While the XML describe only the content or the meaning. No appearance structure is there, but it is somewhat different structure. Uh, we'll talk about this in uh, coming questions. An HTML uses a fixed, unchangeable set of tags. So they, if you learn HTML, if you are aware of the tags, well and good. There will be no uh, other HTML tags. While if you are with XML, you can create your own tags. Actually, actually you are actually uh, making your own tags here. This is all uh, XML is all about. Now, what are the benefits of XML? XML has many benefits. First of all, it is simple, simplicity. Information coded in XML is very easy to read and understand, plus it can be processed easily by the computer. And openness, XML is W3C standard. That is why I was specifying that it is being recognized the World Wide Web Consortium. It's a XML, uh, XML is a W3 standard and endorsed by the software giants, software industry giants. Extensibility, there's no fixed set of tags. New tags can be created as you have been needed. Self description in traditional database, data records require schemas by the, net, net, uh, the administrator of the database. XML documents can be stored without such uh, for definition because they contain metadata in the form of uh, tags and attributes. It contains machine read readable context uh, information like tags, attributes, and elements and structure. They provide content information that can be used to interpret the meaning of the content. Uh, opening up new possibilities for high uh, and highly efficient search engines, intelligent data mining agents, etc. And separates content from the presentation. So XML tags describes, you know, meaning. They do not say anything about the presentation. So the motto of HTML is, I know how it looks. Whereas the motto of XML is, I know what it means. And you tell me how it should look. So the look and feel in the XML can uh, be controlled by Excel's, uh, that is, uh, XML style sheets, allowing the look of the docu uh, document to be changed without touching on the 
content of the document so multiple views or presentation of the same content can be rendered using xsl and it supports multilingual documents in unicode so this is the important factor for the inter internationalization universalization of applications then uh, facilitates the comparison and aggregation of data so the tree structure of xml documents this allow document to be compared and aggregated efficiently element by element tree structure this uh, you know you can embed multiple data types so xml documents can contain any possible uh, data type from multimedia data say image sound video to active components like java applet active x and this can embed existing data also means mapping existing data structure like file system or relational database to uh, xml is quite simple xml supports multiple data format and that can cover all existing data structure and it provides a one server view of distributed data so xml documents can consist of nested elements that are distributed over multiple remote servers so xml is currently the most sophisticated form of distribution uh, of data so the world wide web can be seen as one huge xml database what is well formed xml document? so if a document is syntactically correct it can uh, be called as a well formed XML documents. So a well-formed document conforms to XML basic rule of uh, syntax like every open tag should be closed. The open tag must exactly match the closing tag that is XML is case sensitive. All elements must be embedded within a single root element and child tags must be closed before the parent tags. And a well-formed document has correct XML uh, tag syntax but the element might be uh, invalid for the specific document type what is uh, you know xml valid xml this is well formed now the question can come but what is valid xml document so if a document is structurally correct then it can be called as a valid, valid xml document so valid document conforms to the predefined uh, rules of specific type of uh, document ddd so these rules can be uh, written by the author of the xml document or by someone else and the rules determining the type of data that each part of the document can contain. So, valid XML document is implicitly well formed, but well formed may not be valid. Well formed may not be valid. Now, what is the structure of this XML document? This is the structure. This is a simple XML document. This is XML declaration. You, by question mark, you write a version here, encoding here. This UTF 8 is showing that it is. A unicode and this is the document uh, type declaration dtd means this structure is defined or uh, told by which which uh, document the document which is document type definition this dtd uh, this line is giving the path of this dtd and this is your xml body now this library this is no tag there is no tag you will find it in HTML or any related uh, language. This is what you have made. This is what user has made. Now, shelf ID. This is uh, you know you can say it's a it's an attribute of shelf ID. And book is there. Then this title, author, book is closed. Shelf is closed. Library is closed. What is processing instruction in XML? The processing instruction is a is a information. Uh, which we would like to give to application uh, through a processing instruction and uh, application would get idea about how to process the document so a processing instruction can appear anywhere and any number of times in the document how does the xml structure is defined xml structure will have a structure which has to be defined before we can create the documents and work with them so structural rules can be defined using uh, various uh, available uh, technologies one is your DTD, document type definition, and the other is schema. What is DTD? DTD is document type definition. Def defines the legal, legal building blocks of an XML uh, document. Like in HTML, it says you have a body enclosed in greater than and less than sign. So that is logical, that is allowed. In this, in this um, XML, what is allowed is to be written in this document type definition which de defines the legal building blocks of xml so it defines rules for specifying type of documents which which includes them of elements how and where they can be used 
the order of the element, the proper nesting and containment of the elements and the element attributes. So to apply a DTD to an XML document, you can include it is the element definition within the XML document itself, as we just seen in the prologue, prologue of uh, the example, and you can provide the DTD as a separate file, uh, whose name you reference in the XML document. So the second part we have just seen, I'll show you again. See this one, this is the second one, like this DTD is being shown here, means it is embedded inside it, uh, the path is embedded inside, not, not truly embedded, but the path is being uh, directed. What is XML schema? Now XML schema describes the structure of XML instance document by defining what each element must or may contain. So XML schema is expressed in the form of a separate XML file and uh, XML schema provides much more control on element and attribute data types as compared to DTT and some data types are predetermined and predefined and um, new ones can be created like this XSD, this is XML uh, schema the definition or document schema and this is uh, you know uh, the path and uh, this schema element says that you have an element this is a simple type element complex type element and all those things which a schema can define what are different uh, or difference between DTDs and schema this is very important because there are two types two two uh, way in which you can actually uh, place your validity and well formness of uh, an XML and XML it's um, acceptab acceptability to the other uh, or other people or the, or to outside world. So schema, schema document is an XML document that is the structure of the XML document is specified by another XML document. XML document having the structure of another document. DTD follows SGML syntax. This SGML is, I said, the mother of both HTML and uh, XML. So schema supports variety of data types similar to programming language, while in DTD everything is treated as text only. In schema, it is possible to inherit and create relationship among elements. Uh, this is not possible in DTD without inv invalidating existing documents. In schema, it is possible to group elements and attributes so that they uh, can be treated as a single logical unit, while in uh, DTD, grouping of elements and attributes is not possible. In schema, it is possible to specify upper limit for the number of occurrences of an element. It is not possible to specify the upper limit of an element in DTDs. What is a complex element? A complex element is a XML element that contains other elements or attributes. So there are different types of uh, complex element, uh, mostly four of them. Empty elements, elements that contain only other elements, uh, elements that contain only tags, elements that contain both other elements and text. What is a simple element? If we talk about complex element, we have to know about a simple element also. A simple element in, a, in an XML element, uh, you know, is an XML element that can contain only text. So, a simple element cannot have attributes, cannot have, um, can, cannot contain another element, cannot contain um, this simple uh, element cannot be empty, and the text can be of many different types and may have various instructions applied to it. What are namespaces and why are they important? A simple element in an XML element can that can contain uh, only text, as we have just seen. So namespaces are a simple and straightforward way to straightforward way to distinguish names used in XML documents. So no matter where they come from, XML namespaces are used for providing unique uh, name elements and attributes in an XML instance. So they allow developers to qualify uniquely the element names and relationship and make these names recognizable to avoid name collisions. Wherever you see namespaces in your C hash or in, the, in, the, in any language C++, they, they are specifically used for name collision avoidance. So name collision on elements that have the same name but are defined in different vocabularies. So they allow tags uh, for multiple uh, namespaces to be mixed which is essential if data is coming from multiple sources. Uh, just take an example, a bookstore may define that title tag to mean the title of the book contained only within the book element and a directory of people however might define this title to indicate a person's position. For instance, title, precedent title. So uh, there is a collision. So namespace help define these distinctions clearly. So every namespace has a unique name which is a string so you cannot allow two namespace to have the same name. 
So to maintain the unique names among namespace, uh, an IRL is most preferred approach since URLs are unique. So except for no namespace schemes or schemas, every XML uh, schema uses uh, at least two namespaces, that is the target namespace and XML schemas namespace.